So we have a special guest today, Kirk Orndorff, who has been photographing the Great Western Railroad for many years. So Kirk, can you tell us like why you started photographing the Great Western and a little bit of history behind it? Okay, sure. Um, my dad got me interested in trains when I was pretty young. Uh, he was interested in them and we would go watch trains together. And so I developed an interest in, in trains. And when we moved to Loveland in uh, 1983, 1984, uh, I really enjoyed getting to know the Great Western because it was a local railroad. It was a railroad I had heard about, but had never seen. And, you know, connecting all the small towns and the mid-sized towns here in the Front Range, uh, it just had a local flavor and, and local employees. And uh, so I met a man there who was also a, a fan of the Great Western, and we got to be friends, and we started uh, going out often to to watch their trains and take some pictures. And uh, being headquartered at the time right here in Loveland, where I live, uh, it just was kind of a hometown railroad. That's wonderful. a good pause between when you brought up a photo i think each time so yeah i did i i it finished with the map and then shut my mouth and then <laughs> and we did so you want me to just start with the this photo again okay let me know when you're ready okay this is the first picture i ever took of the great western and what you're seeing here is this is a passenger train running from Loveland to Johnstown and Milliken for beef and bean days, which is a yearly celebration there uh, every summer. And I read in the newspaper that this passenger train was going to be running. So I went over and I watched people load. They were loading people at the depot in Loveland. And I followed it over all the way to Milliken. And this was uh, my first shot. The Loveland Sports Park is right off to the right uh, today. And um, back then it was kind of out in the country. But you can see the old sugar factory in the background. And um, I thought it was nice with the mountains. And, and this was the first picture. So I thought I'd share the first picture. That's a really beautiful photo, Kirk. And I love the passenger train. It's not very often that you would see a passenger train in the 80s. I understand it was for an event, but just really neat. It was rather unusual. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. I was glad I did it. I didn't really know where I was going, but uh, it, it was well worth it. That's awesome. This 211 is a, the locomotive that Great Western used uh, for a number of years. It was built in 1954 for the Union Pacific, and the Great Western acquired it from the Union Pacific in 1986. And you can see on the nose, it says Robin. The N is hidden by the handrail. But Robin was the wife of the general manager. And he was also the engineer at the time. And so he honored his wife by putting her name on the locomotive. That's and really neat. It's like naming a ship. <laughs> Name a locomotive. <laughs> yeah. Makes it, again, that's that hometown flavor uh, of seeing... Her name on the locomotive it was it was a lot of fun. And then that caboose was the only time we ever saw it uh, with a locomotive. That is now at a museum in Windsor. That's right. I have visited this caboose in, at that museum. And I think it's just the Windsor History Museum. Um, and you, they have days where they will open the caboose and let you go in. Yep. You yep. Go it today. I, now, I, I, something I've noticed about this photo is the paint scheme of the Great Western Railroad. Looks like it's orange and white and black to me. Yes, yes. They used that for a number of years. Um, very colorful scheme, well liked by people in the area. And um, we hope that they're getting back to that soon because they kind of got away from it for, for a few years. But uh, uh, we'll see a little later. We hope they're getting back to it. Okay. Okay. 
this was in the uh, summer of 1988, and we're in front of the engine house in Loveland with all four of the Great Western locomotives that they were using at the time. Uh, 211, again, as I mentioned, was their primary. But over on the left, you'll see Great Western number 51. And that is a Great Western steam locomotive. It was no longer owned by the railroad, but it was owned by an individual. And he ran some trips on the railroad. Great Western used the locomotive to haul some trips in, I believe it was 83. Uh, and here it was being worked on in preparation for going uh, out of state to be used for a little while. And But it was nice to see. It's a very popular locomotive. Uh, several great Western steam locomotives survive. And uh, that's highly unusual for being such a small railroad. Yeah, I have a favorite. I love the Great Western number 90. Um, it runs in Strasburg, Pennsylvania now, and I went out and visited it and uh, got to spend some time and take some photographs. It's very beautiful. We actually chose the 90 for the uh, posters that we have at the museum for our 10th anniversary. So you can actually get a poster at our museum of the Great Western 90, which looks a lot like the 51. <laughs> so. Yep. And the, the Great Western 90 is a very very well-known locomotive throughout the entire country. Um, and 51, as I mentioned, was used in some other states, um, came back and has now been in storage for a number of years. Um, no, no longer in Loveland, I believe it's down in Hudson. But um, it was nice to get this picture with all of the, uh, all of the things together. That's a beautiful photo. I love it. Thank you. There's one other Great Western, number 75, is being restored right now in Heber City, Utah. So that's three surviving uh, on a small railroad that's highly, highly unusual. It's, it's kind of neat. I didn't know that. So that's, is that the Heber Valley Railroad? Is that yes. Called? And yep. that's a tourist line that you can go and ride today. So exactly. Great. I'll have to go do that. Now I'm going to have to take a trip. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is that better? I have no idea what I said the first time. So other than thanks. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Thank you. And Kirk, you're going to do this for 